Welcome to TV3. On this week's episode, we'll be covering fashion, police, heavy weapons. My thick boy arrived at my doorstep, and of course, we'll round things out by answering some of your comments and questions in the feedback section. As always, if you ever want to introduce a future installment of TV3, you can always do so by sending in your intro to my email over at tv 3 at gmail.com. The news this week is divided into two parts, Pretty Girls and Pretty Cool Robots. We'll start with the ladies, and first up from Good Smile Company, they have the full reveal on their Figma Tenjo Utena from Revolutionary Girl Utena. Now, I will admit, I have yet to see Revolutionary Girl Utena. It wasn't on TV where I grew up here in Canada, and I have yet to go and revisit it. That said, this Figma looks totally 90s, and I'm totally cool with that. I've got really nothing else to say. I'm sure if you're an Utena fan, this will sh this will please you. I think it's a good-looking Figma. Like, as is with most recent releases from Good Smile, I do think it's a bit overpriced at 6,000 yen, but I don't think there's any other Utena merchandise out there that's worth grabbing, so I'm sure this will please fans. Our next piece of news comes from the world of Frame Arms Girls, and as you guys know, I've been wanting to check out these Frame Arms Girls kits for a long time, and well, guess what? That time is now because their most recent announcement is the Frame Arms Girl Gurai by Jun Watanabe. Now this is essentially the Gurai kit. However, they've brought in a very famous fashion designer and ironically, you know what he did? He just covered up the entire girl. That's right. He gave her a undersuit. He changed the coloring around so that she's not really scantily clad. And it's something that definitely suits my tastes a whole lot more. I'm 100% in for this kit. The only reservation I do have in terms of the design is I'm not sure I'm into the fact that they kept the blonde hair on this kit. I think it would have looked a lot neater if they changed it out for something a bit more vibrant, something that complemented her blue undersuit. I think I would have gone with like a pink, maybe a purple, even a brunette if you want to keep things a bit more realistic. But I don't know. For me, the blonde uh, against that white armor just, it just doesn't sit right to my eyes. So who knows? I'm pretty excited. This is going to be my first foray into FAG and I can't wait. Our next announcement comes from Square Enix, and it's probably my favorite of all the announcements this week, and that is the Bring Arts 2B and Machine set. 2B, of course, being the lead heroine from the recently released video game Nier Automata. Now, this is going to be a 1 12th scale action figure. It comes with her machine that helps her glide around the world. She's going to come with her sword, extra hands, an additional head without the mask over top of it, a bucket a moon head, and a display stand. So a fully packed package in terms of a figure. It's going to be, unfortunately, a little bit pricier than I was expecting. It's going to be about 9,000 yen. So to put that in context with something like SH Figure Arts and Figma, it's a little bit more than I thought that this would cost. Nevertheless, it's something that I'm super interested in. 2B has to probably be my favorite female character design in recent years as far as video games are concerned. It's hard for me to think of any other female character design that has really appealed to me more than 2B, so I'm very hyped for it. Can't wait for it to come out when it hits store shelves in March. Moving on to the world of robots, our first piece of news comes from Takara Tomi and their full reveal of the masterpiece movie, Barricade. Now, Barricade is a very cool design from the movie series of Transformers. Personally, he was always my favorite of all the Decepticons from the movie series, and I think this figure does look really well, especially the vehicle mode. The vehicle mode looks fantastic. The robot mode looks good too, as well as his ball saw thing. I only have one concern, and that is the blue paint they've used in robot mode. Now, I don't know if it's because these pictures are super overexposed so that you could see the, the actual details of the black plastic, and that's why the blue is looking lighter than it probably is, or if that's the actual blue they used. I mean, I'm not really the biggest fan of how vibrant it is. I, I would prefer something a bit darker. However, uh, you know, I will hold my judgment until I get the figure in hand because I will say over the past year, the Transformers movie masterpiece series of toys have probably been my favorite pieces of transforming figures in a long time. They just accomplish so much. So I'm super pumped for this. I can't wait to get my hands on one and see if it really lives up to the hype. I suppose the only concern on my end would be the price, seeing as how, at least here in Canada, these things retail from anywhere from $100 to $130. So 
that's that's a little pricey. Speaking of pricey, Takara Tomy had another Masterpiece Transformer announcement in the past week, which was just insanely expensive, but also kind of warranted. This is the Masterpiece Dinobot MP41, and my gosh, does this look like a very pretty toy. Dinobot is arguably the best character in Beast Wars. He's definitely my favorite character in Beast Wars. And this toy seems to do him justice. I mean, the robot mode looks great. The dino mode also looks great. But it's the idea that these two things, these two pictures are still the same toy. I am amazed that they made this transformation work. Of course, they're going to do a couple little cheating tricks like... Dinobot's chest obviously isn't his real dino mode head. However, you can't spot it in the robot mode, so I'm not really disappointed on that front. He's going to come with some cool accessories. He comes with a display stand. He comes with a golden disc. And he even comes with his eye lasers. I mean, that's really cool. Now, I did say this was going to be an expensive toy, and boy, is it expensive. If you're looking at a retail price, as near as makes no difference... $300, 2,800 yen. That's a lot of money. Now, of course, this is going to be the biggest of the Beast Wars masterpiece re releases so far. And when you consider the fact that this is probably going to be a fully painted figure, which includes the textured sculpting on the Dyna mode, it starts to make sense. If anything, it's kind of like Masterpiece Megatron in that the price from this toy is coming from the fact that it has to use so many parts to do... I don't know, transformation magic. Now, whether or not you feel like that is a warranted or a justified reason for the high cost, I can't answer that. For me, I think it's definitely a little higher than I would have liked. Maybe not a little higher, way too high for what I have, would have liked. Uh, but it's Dinobot, and Dinobot's not a character I can really confuse, so I'm not going to sit here and complain. I'm just going to buy it, and if I if I manage to be disappointed with it, then I'll tell you all about it. Now, in news that surprises absolutely nobody, Bandai have revealed a perfect grade 160th scale Exia repair. Now, I am honestly unsure if this is just a an additional repair part set for the perfect grade Exia or if this is going to be a completely separate set. But nevertheless, if you wanted an Exia repair in perfect grade scale, you're going to get it one way or another. I gotta say, as cool as this is, it's not something that I'm personally looking forward to. I think that if you wanted the ultimate version of the repair, the metal build Exia repair was kind of the way to go on this. But hey, if you just really wanted a giant version of the repair Exia, it's here for you. It is going to be a P Bandai exclusive, so it's not going to be that easy to get a hold of, nor is it going to be cheap. But the options are there if that's something you wanted. And finally, one of the coolest announcements of the week has been from Bandai as well, and it is the reveal, or the full reveal, of the metal build Gundam Estrella Type F with the GN Heavy Weapon set. Now this is an incredible looking figure. It is essentially the Red Exia, however, they've added all these extra parts and weapons to it that just gives it a little bit more flair. I particularly love the use of the three shields, and it's being used as like a sort of barrier or, or wing parts. It's just a really cool idea. Of course, having the Estrella Type F fully naked without any weapons is a cool look as well. This is going to be a P Bandai exclusive. Releases next year in May for the low, 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 low price of 24,000 yen. So again, it's a metal build. You didn't really think it was going to be cheap, but because this is a P Bandai exclusive, you're probably going to be paying a little bit more than you would have wanted. All right, so this week, I bought some Gundams. You want to see these Gundams? I'm going to show you these Gundams. First one is the... What is this? This is the High Crate Nin Pulse. This is from Build Fighters... Um, build fighters, mafia counterattack. This kid actually looks really cool. It's a shame that in the anime, it wasn't actually that cool. Knee guns. That's right. The uh, knee guns Gundam was the other high grade I picked up this month. And I got to say, this is a very cool design. 
it kind of did nothing again in battle log episode four but it was definitely the gundam of that that short little ova that i liked the most and hey it's got knee guns how am i gonna say no to a gundam who's got guns strapped on his knees it's just really cool i also really like that he's got very muted colors i think i want to try and make him look black and white so i'm pretty happy to build this one but of course there was one Gundam that finally came in the mail, and it's one that I have been waiting for for a while. He's my thick boy. Can you guess who it is? Too late, I'm going to tell you. It's the Master Grade TR1 Hazel. This is my thick boy. He is here. I cannot wait to find some free time when I can put this together because I haven't been excited to build a Master Grade in a, in a while. And, well, I'm excited again, so... Uh, I want to put it together. I want to paint it. I want to build it. And uh, I want a gunpla, you know? We've reached the feedback portion of the show, and our first question comes from Glenn, and he says, Hello, Type B3. I really wanted to dive into the Lego hole, but I don't want to be considered being childish. Our Lego aimed towards adult collectors. What is your advice? Oh, these types of questions. These types of questions are always a lot of fun. Here's the thing. If you are already in this childish hobby to begin with, say you are into building Gundams or you, you buy action figures, guess what? You are already in a childish hobby, right? So if you're thinking about diving into something else, no one's going to consider anything less of you. You're all part of the same thing. I mean, I buy Lego, I buy Transformers, I buy Gundams. They're all toys at the end of the day. So if you're in it already, then I wouldn't worry about it. If you're on the outside looking in and you want to get into Lego or something, uh, here's, here's, here's the ironic part about Lego. Lego, despite being marketed towards children, they are so damn expensive that only the rich white collar six figure earning salary man can afford it so if you're buying lego you're doing pretty good for yourself and no one has the right to make fun of you because you because chances are you could crush them with your wallet chairman mao says hey type v3 what do you think about the mg gm command being the long anticipated and hyped up master grade number 200 nah you know what nah it doesn't matter it doesn't really matter to me whatever it's a number i who cares Winston asks, not counting a re-release or new paint job, what would you want the next Super Robot Shigokin release to be? This one is all too easy. A long time ago, Bandai released a Super Robot Shigokin Dino Megazord, or, or Daizujin, and they never did anything else to add on to that. Now, what I would like is a matching Dragon Caesar, or a Dragon Zord. I think that would be my ideal sort of, yes, please make that Bandai. But... The one I'm really crossing my fingers for, the one that I hope happens that probably has almost no shot, is the combined version of the Dragon Zord with the Megazord. Now, I'm not talking about the one where the Megazord wears the dragon as a cape. I'm talking about the one where the Dragon Zord cannibalizes parts from the Megazord and then he has a giant drill lance because that was always my favorite, favorite, favorite Power Rangers Megazord. What's your best Figma? I don't know, Saber 2.0? That one's a pretty good one. Vincenzo Man asks, If you could only keep one toy from your collection, which one would you choose? I would choose none of them, because if I kept one toy from my collection, what would happen is I would want to buy a second one, then a third one, then a tenth one, then a hundredth one. If I could just, you know, cut the, co cut the cord, clean slate, get out of this hobby and never return, I would. Because collecting toys ain't cheap, and I could probably use that money for better things. And, uh, as sad as that sounds, that's the truth. Liam Grace asks, What do you think of Moira, the new Overwatch hero? As someone who gets stuck playing healer a lot, I'm super excited. Well, even though my favorite class to play is tank, the number one class I actually play is healer, and my favorite support healer has always been Ana, followed by Mercy, and I've just never been able to click with the other three uh seeing moira having played moira she's definitely more up my alley just because she's she's got a bit more activity going on i feel like i'm part of the part of the the fight when i'm when i'm her in terms of her actual kit i think it's really cool having to attack in order to heal that's always a really neat mechanic her design is neat 
and it's it's fine. I just feel like it's almost too. I don't want to say realistic, but it's too. It's not over the top enough. I feel like with the Overwatch characters and designs, every one of the heroes has this very over over the topness to them. You know, Tracer is like super fun and giggly and and very animated and emotive, and and that kind of design and philosophy seems to carry out with all the heroes, but. Moira just seems so basic in comparison. It's almost weird. I feel like she needs to be a little bit more on the crazy psychotic side or or something. It's just she feels too normal. But otherwise, I think the hero seems cool. So I can't wait to get more time playing with her. New supports are always fun. And the last question comes from Swift Junai. Which figure toy manufacturer would you want to create the official Type V3 figure? And what accessories would you come with? Okay, so for this question, the answer changes depending on what you're referring to. If it is, is there a figure that I would personally design, who would I want to make? That would probably be Sentinel because I would make a really complex mecha type robot type thing and it would transform and I would want it to have a million moving parts and a really well done paint job, maybe with a couple LEDs and I think that would look really neat. It would be hugely expensive and no one could afford it and I would bankrupt Sentinel, but that's the kind of figure I would make. Uh, as for what if the figure was of me, like you guys, like you wanted me to make a figure of myself, um, that's a bit tougher. There's a lot of great companies who put out who are who make really nice uh, action figures out there. I would probably go with. Nope. You know what? I gotta go back to my bread and butter. I I love Figmas. Figmas have always been my favorite type of action figure out there, and to me, Figmas have always proved that they've got really good. Uh, versatility in terms of what they're able to create going from you know you know classic cute anime girls to anything up to like samus for metro right that's a full armored figure and it, it looks really well and so yeah i would say good smile company and figma and it would be me i would come with a tiny little optimus prime you could hold in his hand as well as a road bike uh because those are the things i like to do so that's what i would make <laughs> And unfortunately, we've reached the end of another episode of TV3. As always, if there's anything I missed or anything you wanted to discuss further, feel free to leave your comment in the comment section below, and I'll make sure to answer it in an upcoming episode. As for me, well, I've got a date with my thick boy, and uh, we're going to have a good time. See you next week. <laughs>